Gog and Magog and Sodom and Gomorrah. How on earth am I going to connect these two? Well, let's take a look and see. Fascinating. The scripture has many tiny, intricately connected happenings that will happen or have happened in scripture. And it takes glasses. <laughs> it takes quite a bit to, to, to find them. Um, you all know where Sodom and Gomorrah was, don't you? Down by the Dead Sea. And for a fact, the reason the Dead Sea is now dead is because of the fall and destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And why was it destroyed? The book of Jasher, the book of Jubilees, and the Bible, these three important books, tell the story and tell the sin that was going on there. Worse sin than we have today. Yeah. Men looking for the angels. Men abusing one another. Sexual sin rampant. Yeah. Um, God in his mercy tells us these things. And you know, not every story is pretty uh, with a happy ending. Uh, but God in his mercy spoke to Lot, the brother, the no, the nephew of Abraham. Warning him to get out of town. Yeah. And not to look back. And this is what it says in Genesis 19. This is God speaking to Lot. Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain, in the lowlands, around the Dead Sea area there. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. So God's saying, go get up in the mountains. Unless you'd be destroyed. He had to get up high. So you know the story. Not to turn around. His two daughters and he, Lot, fled. And his wife turned around and she was destroyed. What was happening? Judgment coming up from the bowels of the earth. Fire and brimstone. Let me read that for you. In 1923. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. That's another city that he fled to. The sun uh, risen over Zoar. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Fire and brimstone comes up from the earth and then comes back down upon the earth like that. So he had to get up into the high mountains to escape this led to stuff that's coming up out of the earth. Sulfur and brimstone is what the core of the earth is made out of. But it was coming up with force and it destroyed that whole area permanently. Yes, they're trying to grow some crops there now. They're trying to uh, desalinate the water and they're trying to restore it. But God himself will restore it at his return. Um, read the book of Habakkuk on that one. So I'm going to take you from Sodom and Gomorrah and Gog and Magog. There's a time coming when Satan and his cohorts will be locked up and it will be during the time of the kingdom of God. You know, we pray, thy kingdom come. Well, his kingdom is the thousand years of, of reigning upon the earth, which has not happened yet. He's not back yet. It's coming. And during that time, Satan is locked up. He can't go out to deceive people. But entering into 
that period, what, thousand year period. The Battle of Armageddon and, and uh, the second coming of the Lord and all this uh, restoration and uh, fighting and going on and happening that time. Any Gentile that will be saved will be taken out of the earth at the last minute. Yes, it's one of the raptures. Any Gentile left on the earth at his coming will die, will be destroyed. He will spare Israel, his family, through it, as he spared Noah's family in the ark. So now the, the millennial reign, as it's called, the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, those are the titles for it. All the Jews that have remained are going to repopulate the earth, just as Noah repopulated the earth, just as Adam and Eve were told to populate the earth. So too will the Jews at this time, and they will cover the earth again with humankind. Now during the same period, uh, we call the millennial reign of Christ, the Messiah, there are leaves of healing for the nations. What kind of healing? Same kind that was given on the cross. Healing of sin, iniquities. And it's possible there to be healed of these things. But many won't choose it, as always. The sheep and the goats again. Some choose, some don't. So when, um, when Satan is released at the end of this time, and all these humans were born during that time, they have to have that day of, of correction, change, uh, salvation. Um, let me just read to you now from Revelation 20, verse 7. Now when the thousand years had expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. I'd like to demonstrate for you the four corners of the earth. I have my knife and I have my little globe. And if I cut this, this way and this way, the earth would fall into four hunks, wouldn't it? Those are the four corners or sections of the earth. So with that thought in mind, the four corners, I'm going to go back to Revelation here. And Satan is going to go out to deceive the four corners of the earth. They're not like little places like that, like we think of a corner. But they're these sections of the earth. Going to go out to deceive the nations. Who are the nations? The 12 tribes of Jacob that have repopulated the earth. Well, Isaiah talks a lot about it. So does Jeremiah. Okay, I'm going to read it from the scripture again. And will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the seashore. So we know at one period in history, Gog was a man and then the nation of Gog. And you can get off on all of that. But, but Revelation is using it here to incorporate the entire earth. It's not a one man. It's, you know, it's not all that. It's saying he's going out to deceive. And so God is using this anomaly, this term, this <laughs> whatever you want to call it, Gog and Magog, not as a place and a people, but as a whole earth, the so four sections of the earth. Satan's going out to deceive them and bring them up to battle, and I like this, what Revelation says, whose number is the sands of the seashore. Remember the promise God gave to Abraham? Your, your descendants shall be as the sands of the seashore, as the stars in the heaven. Yeah, so here you can see a little clue from God who it is. Gentiles are not there anymore. This is the Jewish people that repopulated the earth during the uh, millennial kingdom. This is what happens when Satan's deceived them, when he's got them angry, and they're all going up where? They went up on the breadth of the earth, the whole earth, 
and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. There's only one beloved city, people. It's Jerusalem, called Zion. Zion is God's beloved city. So here, I can't, it's, it's just so hard to, to even talk about it because it's so, many will become, many will be through salvation. Many of these Jews, the whole house of Israel will be saved. But in amongst that is a remnant who've been stirred up by Satan at this last moment again. This is all just before eternity. And they come up against Jerusalem once again. Uh, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night forever there. Fire and brimstone, gee, where, where is that? Where have we heard about that? Yeah, back in Sodom and Gomorrah. Is that an opening to where Satan and his cohorts will be thrown? Is that where Satan was released to what? Deceive the nations again? Hmm. Could be. But here we have the fire and brimstone. Which was that Sahama Gomorrah, a one time in history event to teach us about an event of greater magnitude that is coming in the future. Who would have thought? And the fire has been raining down. That's part of the fire and the brimstone. It's rained down upon them. Remember, Lot was told to run to the mountains. There's an interesting scripture in Isaiah 40. Is this the same reason they're said to go up to the high mountains? Let me read it to you. Isaiah 40, verse 9. Oh, Zion, you who bring good tidings. You, you who have taught the planet Earth about God, the good tidings, the good news. Oh, Zion, you who bring good tidings, get up into the high mountains, O oh Jerusalem. It's a warning from God to them. It's an urgency, just like, just like what God said to, to uh, a lot. Escape. And here in Isaiah is saying, uh, get up into the high mountains. And I always wonder, why the high mountains? Why, why not? flatland, just as Lot was told not to stay in the lowlands, to get up into the high mountains. And I believe with all my heart the Judean wilderness right there outside of Jerusalem is exactly where they will flee into those mountains. I studied it out a few years ago and I found seven places of refuge out there, Masada being one of them, where they could flee to. They must get up high. Why? Oh, let me tell you why. I couldn't believe it. This is the same story for the end of time. I'm in Ezekiel talking about the Gog and Magog war that is mentioned that everyone thinks is going to happen now. But Revelation tells us it's after Satan has been released, after the thousand year period. I'm just taking a section. If you want to read this, it's very interesting. It's very interesting, the, the progression in the book of Ezekiel, the events that have to take place in chronological order and they are the resurrection of the dry bones back to life the making the nation of israel or the, the uh, tribes the 12 tribes as one nation uh once they're back together as one then these times come the, the millennial reign has to come and the story of gog and magog is in uh, chapter 38 and I'd like to read to you starting in verse 18. Remember, I just read to you in Revelation, that's when it's going to happen. As, the, as the, a thousand years ended, the, the book, the Bible said in Revelation, Satan will be released, Gog and Magog, to go out to Gog and Magog. What's Gog, Gog and Magog? My four corners of the earth, my oh, entire earth is going out to reap cause destruction, deception, cause them to turn away from Zion, Jerusalem, and their God. 
I'm starting at verse 18. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes up against the land of Israel and says, uh, comes up against the land of Israel. Here we go. What, what's Gog and Magog? They're coming up against Israel. They're coming back to fight against the Holy Land, the promised Holy Land. Says the Lord God that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in my fire of my wrath, I have spoken. Surely in that day, there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. Oh, there's, they're sitting on an earthquake fault right now. There's going to be, there has been earthquakes. And when Yeshua Jesus returns, there's going to be great earthquake um, activity at that time. And this is at the end of the millennium, a great earthquake once again in the land of Israel. So that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, and the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. God's mad at Satan. <laughs> Ooh. The mountains shall be thrown down, and steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog and Magog. Or, uh, my Bible says just Gog. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Uh, remember, this is a representative of Gog and Magog. God's going to say within what? His sword. Against the earth. The peoples of the earth. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against God. <laughs> Let me back up here. The walls shall fall to the ground. Over and over again, the walls have fallen to the ground. But at Jericho, remember, they walked around and, and gave God glory seven times, and the, and the walls fell straight down. That was another one-of-a-kind thing, another miraculous one-time event. Here we have walls again going to come down. I will call for the sword against Gog through all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother. They're all Jews. They'll all be fighting one another. Oh, it just breaks my heart. Listen to this. And I will bring him, Satan. God says, I will bring Satan to judgment. With pestilence and bloodshed, I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him. Flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Once again, the event that occurred at Sodom and Gomorrah is going to occur Sorry, I keep using my earth here. I just dropped it. Sodom and Gomorrah's fire and brimstone, God is saying here in Ezekiel 18.22. Oh, no, 38.22. Fire and brimstone is going to cover the earth. Gog and Magog, he's coming up against it. Oh, I thought the area of Sodom and Gomorrah was a big deal. Because of activity of Satan and the people who follow him. It's mind-boggling. The earth is once again earthquakes, fiery brimstone coming up. So that's why Isaiah 40 says, uh, Oh Zion, get you up into the high mountains. Because the fire and brimstone comes up and then it comes down. But if they're up high enough, they'll be spared. They have to hear that call and flee. Who would have thought God's precious book warns Israel, I hope you read this. Israel, be at peace with your God. Gentiles, do not depart from the faith. Yes. Wow. Can you imagine this? Can you believe it? Oh, 
oh merciful God, you tell us so we can know. You tell those who will happen to live through this, which I won't, to beware. Behold your God, Israel. He's coming to save. 